This slideshow is going to be looking at the special area of environmental microbiology. I spent a lot of time on medical microbiology, but this is looking at another side of it, uh, looking at the beneficial aspects. Environmental microbiology, we're going to divide into a couple different sections. Microbial ecology, this is just studying the microorganisms in their natural habitat. Uh, it's going to be looking at different components that are involved with that, the biotic and also the abiotic components. Microorganisms are producers. When you look at the ecosystem, they're also decomposers. Uh, they play a very important role in nutrient cycling. Bioremediation is using living organisms to break down compounds. This is a large area of market biology of using both bacteria and or fungi to break down some of these hazardous um, compounds that have accumulated in this, usually in the soil. And instead of using mechanical methods of cleaning up the soil, such as digging up the soil, taking it to an incinerator, burning off the hazardous materials, all that takes time. It takes a lot of money to do that. Instead, what bioremediation is, instead of removing that contaminated soil, is bringing microorganisms that can break down the hazardous materials that are in it. Will it take longer? Yes, probably so but it's going to be less expensive. You don't have to, say, haul off the contaminated soil and then replace it with clean soil. You leave it be and you just bring the microorganisms that naturally exist in the soil anyway and have them basically clean up the site. Uh, these are just some examples of things that have, uh, can be done. This shows two different herbicides, atrazine and 2,4-D. Because they have chlorine on it, uh, it's a little bit harder for them to, uh, to be broken down in nature. And so uh, those were some that I had looked at years ago in some of my research of microorganisms that were capable of breaking those down. And when I talk about breaking it down, I mean converting it to CO2 and water completely. Nutrient cycles. Your nutrients, your, your nitrogen, your phosphorus, your sulfur, carbon, all of that is constantly being recycled. How does it get recycled? Well, microorganisms are going to be involved with that. They're going to transform those elements from inorganic to organic forms and then back again. And this just shows uh, an example of this with the carbon cycle. Uh, as animals and plants die, the decomposition returns that carbon back into the soil. Microorganisms that are found in the soil will often then break it down further, releasing some of the CO2 into the atmosphere over long, long, extreme periods of time. So you can, dead animals will help form fossil fuels, which then we recover, that's burned, putting CO2 into the atmosphere. Plants, algae, cyanobacteria take up through photosynthesis that, that carbon dioxide uh, and form it into sugars like glucose, etc. that then uh, animals will eat. And then as the animals die, there it enters back into the cycle again. Some of the CO2 is uh, dissolved into oceans and uh, is used by aquatic bacteria, it's used by algae, cyanobacteria, etc. So it just gives you an idea of how everything gets recycled. And it's not just carbon, it's also things such as nitrogen. And microorganisms are very critical players in the nitrogen cycle because sometimes nitrogen is in the soil and it's in a form that, say, plants cannot use. And so it's the bacteria, it's the fungi that convert it into a form that then can be used. So we've found the microorganisms, they're everywhere. They're below the surface, deep subsurface in the ocean. They're up at uh, high in the atmosphere and everywhere in between. Soil microbiology, this is another specialty area. Uh, the soil is going to contain bacteria, fungi, protozoans, and sometimes uh, people specialize looking just at the rhizosphere. This is the area of the soil that's surrounding the roots of plants. This is a very active area of um, 
living organisms. One type of fungi that grows there are known as the mycorrhizae. These are fungi that do grow in association with plant roots. Over 80% of your plants must have mycorrhizal fungi associated with them to have good growth. Why are the fungi there? Well, it's a symbiotic relationship. The fungi are going to help increase the, the area, the surface area of roots, that it can expand out into the soil to absorb nutrients, to absorb water. The plant is providing, through photosynthesis, carbohydrates for the fungus, fungi to grow. So the fungus is benefiting from the sugars from the plant. The plant is uh, benefiting from the nutrients and water absorption by the fungi. And the fungi actually also provide some protection because it will be covering the plant roots in some cases. One thing that we have seen is that uh, when you have a plant root, on this example, as you see on A, would be without any mycorrhizal fungus associated with it. When it is infected with uh, a type of mycorrhizal known as ectomycorrhizal, you tend to have this uh, increased branching of the roots, once again, increased surface area. That's only going to benefit the plant. And this is just showing a slide showing how all different types of uh, fungi can infect the roots and cause different structural changes within the roots, some more dramatic than others. On the picture on A, that is what we call endomycorrhiza, also known as a VA or vesticular or vascular mycorrhiza, and that's where it's going to uh, that is the fungus that is actually inside the cell of the plant root. B is the ectomycorrhizal, and in this case, the mycelium, the long strands, uh, individual strands, hyphae, you get a mass of its mycelium, and it completely covers the root. Um, this is like putting a coat around the root, protecting it. So anything that is absorbed is going to go through the fungus first. So the overall effects of having the mycorrhizal fungi, once again in A, as you can see, uh, these are pine seedlings. The one on the left has uh, mycorrhizal that was inoculated into the roots as a seedling, and the one on the right does not. So you get increased growth, and this is typical of what you will see with any type of plant that has a mycorrhizal. Truffles, that's actually uh, ectomycorrhizal, usually of oak trees. With aquatic microbiology, uh, you're going to be looking at different uh, water ecosystems and the type of microorganisms that are present there. It's going to vary depending on the temperature of the water, what is the depth that you're looking at, how much light is there, how many, uh, what's the concentration of minerals that are there. And this diagram is just showing, once again, uh, You'll see things like Pseudomonas or Calibacter on the upper zones, but in deeper zones where the sunlight isn't able to penetrate as well, uh, temperature is going to be colder. You might find uh, things such as Clostridium. There's less oxygen down there. Uh, and so you can definitely see there's different zones as to where you will find different types of microorganisms, but they are there. So this is just a very brief um, introduction to showing you that, yes, there's more than just the medical microbiology.